Well, the enemy didn't break me. All he did was break the box. Hallelujah. And when the box is broken, then that that's on the inside comes flooding out. So what am I looking for? I am looking for the oil of joy for the morning that the enemy brought me through. Everything that he has tried to take, he has to restore for the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. I just thank you for this opportunity. I've entitled the message this morning, Oil of Joy. How many needs a little bit of joy this morning? Amen. If you have your Bibles, if you'll turn to Isaiah 61, verse 1 through 3, and most of you could probably quote this scripture, I want you all to stand up. We're we're not going to read this scripture. I want you to lift up your voice, and I want you to declare this scripture. Amen. So if you have your Bibles, we're just going to declare the Word of God upon our lives and upon this place this morning. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captive, and the opening of the prisons to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, hallelujah, to the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. That, That word is just all full of all kinds of promises that the Lord gives to us. Amen. A few months ago, I had... um. Went home on a Sunday afternoon and took a nap, and I had a dream. And in this dream, a guest had come over to to visit, and so out of our normal southern hospitality, I asked the guest, would you like something to drink? And they said, sure, a glass of milk. I thought, good, I've got milk in the fridge. Let me go get you a glass of milk. So I went to the kitchen, and I reached in the cabinet to get a glass. And when I reached in to get a glass, the first thing I pulled out was this little bitty juice glass. I thought, well, I'll be embarrassed to give them a little juice glass of milk. They're going to think I'm stingy. And so then the next item I pulled out was this bowl. Well, we don't serve drinks in bowls. And then I pulled out another item, and it was a um, candle globe. You put candles in it. Well, it's thin. So, I mean, these, none of these vessels I wanted to use. And then the next one was a flower vase. I thought, my goodness. And I I'm, and I'm keep pulling out stuff and pulling out stuff. This dream seemed like it lasted forever. I pulled out another vessel, and it had residue on it where something had just sat in it too long. It had been washed, but it still looked dirty. And finally, I saw a glass. I thought, finally, a normal-looking glass. And then I pulled it out. And when I pulled it out, I discovered it was broken. This dream that seemed like it lasted forever, finally my cell phone went off, and I woke up. And I thought about this dream, and it bothered me because I never served my guest any refreshment because I kept disqualifying the vessel that was being used. How many times has God sent someone in our life to speak a word of life to us, but we disqualified the vessel that God wanted to use? Or better yet, how many times has God want to use us as a vessel for his glory to speak life into someone's life? Amen. But we disqualify ourselves. I'm the wrong gender. I'm the wrong color. I'm the wrong age. I'm too big. I'm too little. I'm this or that. But let me tell you something, God uses all kinds of vessels, and God likes a variety. Amen. 
I remember I was raised on a farm out in the country, and we didn't have like a little bitty backyard garden. We had fields of corn, fields of okra, fields of green beans. I think my mom and dad were preparing for the tribulation. We canned and put up everything out there. And we spent our summers out in the fields hoeing corn and okra and beans, whatever was out there. And I remember we would just bear the heat of the day. We would be hoeing that. We would sweat. would just be pouring off of you, dripping in your face. Your, your blisters from the other week is now turning into calluses. And it's just so hot. And you're praying for just a, sh- a shade or a breeze to come by. And there won't be a cloud in the sky. I know what it's like to be really, really, really thirsty and hot and want something to drink. And if you're really, really thirsty, come on now. If you're really, really thirsty, you're not going to look at that vessel that's bringing you something to drink. I've drunk out of tin cans. I've drunk out of fruit jars before they were a thing. I've, I've drunk out of water hoses. I've drunk out of communal dippers out of well. I know what it's like to receive refreshment and you're not looking at that vessel. Amen. Hallelujah. But I want to talk to you just for a little bit about this one that's broken. Amen. Back the end of August, my oldest brother and his wife both came down with COVID and um, ended up in the hospital. And I remember I called my brother and he was, he was worried about his wife um, being in the hospital and she had some health problems, and I didn't know till I called that he had COVID also. And so I, I prayed for him on the phone, and I said, I love you, Micah. He says, I love you, sis. And that was our last conversation. Amen. A few days later, I find out he's put on the ventilator. And so I'm still praying. The next morning, we get a call saying he's not going to make it through the day. He passed on that afternoon. And I can tell you, when when you lose someone you love, it breaks your heart. And I just wept. There's a difference between weeping and crying. If you don't know the difference, you've never wept. You've never lost somebody that was close to you and dear to your heart. Amen. Just three weeks later, we went to my sister's and sister-in-law's house, this was the first time we saw her since she, she recovered and she got out of the hospital, but she's still on a walker. And so we went to her house and my other two brothers were there. And, and I can tell you, when you lose someone, you realize how precious time is. And you want to take those that you love and hold them just a little bit closer. And you want to hold them just a little bit longer. Amen. And I remember Luke had, had cooked steaks, and they were so good. And I remember just hugging Luke and saying, I love you, brother. And then it was only three days later I get a call that Luke had passed away, and he was hit with a car. There was a wreck. He got out to help the other person. A third car hit him, and he died suddenly. And I can tell you, I lost it. I was already grieving, but I lost it because someone else that I love is now gone. Amen. I was broken. And the enemy comes and says, well, you can't be used if you're broken. You can't be used if there's something wrong with you. But I can tell you that I have a promise that God gives beauty for ashes and he gives the oil of joy for mourning. So I am not looking at the brokenness, but I am looking for an expansion of the oil of God. Amen. The Bible says in Philippians 4, it says, finally, my brethren, whatever things are true and whatever things are honest, whatever Whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, he says, think on these things. I can tell you when bad things happen, it takes effort on your part to think about the goodness of God. Hallelujah. I remember after I was able to gather my thoughts to thank God, you're still on the throne. God, you're still a good God. I have much to be thankful for. And the enemy want to bring the the negative into my mind, into my spirit. But I know that according to word of God, I have good things to think about. Amen. And, And it takes effort 
on our part to be obedient to the word of God. Because I can tell you, the, the, the Bible says love your enemies. Well, that's easy to do if you ain't got no enemies. Amen. But you let somebody hurt someone that you love. You let somebody hurt you. Or you let somebody hurt your children. And you have an enemy. Then it's going to take some effort. It's going to take some prayer on your part to love your enemies. Amen. Because we have to be doers of the word and not hearers only. Hallelujah. But we have promises that God gives beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. And we learn from scriptures, Jesus said that the enemy comes not, but for to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, I have come life, that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Hallelujah. So the enemy says, you can't, <laughs> hallelujah, you can't be used. There's something wrong with you. You still got residue in your life. You're the wrong size, shape, color, gender. You're broken. You're broken. You can't be used. But I read in the scripture over in Mark, the 14th chapter, it talks about a woman having an alabaster box. And, and, and it says, then being in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at meat, there came a woman having an alabaster box of ointment of spikenard, very precious, and she broke the box and poured it out on his head. The enemy will tell you you can't be used, but you're broken. Well, the enemy didn't break me. All he did was break the box. Hallelujah. And when the box is broken, then that that's on the inside comes flooding out. So what am I looking for? I am looking for the oil of joy, for the morning that the enemy brought me through. Everything that he has tried to take, he has to restore for the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. The enemy thought that when he took Jesus and crucified him on the cross, amen, it said that he whipped him with 39 stripes, put a crown of thorns on his head, and, and, and they laid Jesus, hallelujah, in the grave. And the enemy thought, well, it's time. Let's go have a party. We've killed the Son of God. We've destroyed the plan of God. And, and he thought he had done, he really thought he had done something. But what he didn't know is Jesus said, nobody takes my life, but I give it. Jesus, when Jesus said to the Father, into thy hand I commend my spirit, at that moment, Jesus' spirit went to be with the Father, and that body went into the ground, and the enemy said, I've done something. All he was able to do was to release resurrection power. All he could do is destroy the body. All he could do is destroy the box, and it releases what's on the inside of us. Don't let the enemy take that. whatever is wrong with you. Don't let the enemy take whatever you're going through and say you can't be what God called you to be. You're an anointed vessel of God. It's Christ in you, the hope of glory. You have the joy. You have the peace of God. And people need what is on the inside of you. Sometimes we have to allow the Spirit of God to break us so that He can use us. Anytime Jesus broke something, He multiplied it. That's expansion for the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. God bless you.